All right. Hello again, everybody, and, and, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Kingdom of the Kale Isles. Yes, this is my custom d d campaign set in my own special world, uh, full of special people that you see below me. Um, and I haven't killed them yet. I mean, it it's been three years and I, I I mean one of them almost died once but I don't know maybe I'm losing my touch I even tried to die once <laughs> yeah I died once well you kind of <laughs> died because then you undied you know they're they're able to bring you back so I mean yeah you you died but it wasn't it was like a comic book death you know Better. Well, that's okay. Ever since we leveled up, I much much harder to kill. Well, and that's barbarians. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I don't really have any announcements for this week. Uh, other, uh, no, there, there's nothing. So, so we should, uh, uh, we sh- we should just get into the game. So, um. To uh, bring us back into uh, uh, the world, um, uh, hmm. uh, the, these guys have been participating in a uh, a, a, a tournament uh, as, a, as a way to kind of blow off some steam. You know, maybe make a little extra money, get some renown. Um, and, uh, most recently last week, everybody had their, their, their first, uh, round, uh, battles and, uh, Kata had a, a bit of a weird one. Um, these are all f- fights to first blood and she went up against somebody who didn't have any blood, um, which, you know, is cheating. Um, and then it turned out that the guy uh wasn't really there to compete as much as he was to kill kata um and uh you know that's just you know lame uh so uh everybody uh helped fix that pretty quickly and epically uh and fate actually met uh someone that he has no idea who they are but seems to have a vested interest in keeping him and and possibly his friends safe um and uh uh you guys got uh an an invitation to dinner with uh the the eternal empress and um uh the prince consort so uh yeah uh that's where we're gonna uh start it off you guys were, were were kind of uh uh uh, they cl- cleared out the arena for the day to kind of, you know, in- investigate where this guy came from and, and all that stuff. Um, and so you guys have a, a couple hours before you- you're going to be summoned for dinner uh, with the Empress. Um, so do you guys have, have anything you want want to do for those couple of hours? Hmm. I'll say at some point, well, it took a short rest and did arcane recovery. Okay. I, I always love how fade when you're considering, uh, what action you want to take. It's, it's like you're browsing fruits. You're like, well, do I want I this? More, one? I have more people to think about now. <laughs> when I do things. Um, I keep waiting for you to squeeze the camera to see if it's right. Um, okay, no, I'm good. I was I'll just try to clean up. <laughs> I'll try to clean up. Okay. Uh, so, so anything else you guys just kind of, you know, clean up from the day and, 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 and prepare yourselves for, for, for dinner. I, I kind of want to ask, uh, the party once we're done mm. with, with whatever preps. Um, I know I had mentioned before that we shouldn't get into someone else's fight. And I know I 
I'm starting to second guess that because of everything that we're starting to see. Like, how how deep do we want to get involved with these people? Like, I've I've gone back and forth. I just I, I need to know where you guys stand. We're strangers in a strange land at this point, and I don't like it. And I guess I think we need allies more than we need independence and freedom at this point. So I, I'm not. Go ahead. Given that we were just attacked in the middle of a public event, I'm. Yeah, maybe. I don't know that I trust them, but I don't know that we have another choice. I don't think we do. There's too much going on at this point. We need help. <sighs> it's bullshit, but it is what it is. And maybe you'll get some, you know, actual cool weapons and things out of it. Uh, we'll see if anything's better than what I've got already. I love the military contracts. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the military. I don't know what's cracked up to be. So is Kata and thoughts. Kata, can you hear us? Kata, can you hear me? I, I think she's frozen. No, she's no, not. Oh, she's frozen for me. I'll refresh. Oh, let me uh, just reconnect. reconnect, guys. Sorry. There, there we go. Mm. Hi, you're back. Okay. Yeah. Like, I'm agreeing with the fade on it. Okay. So you guys continue to, continue to kind of chatter and, and things like that. And um, as you uh, are, are, are speaking, uh, suddenly you, you uh, uh, see uh, a, a very formally dressed gentleman uh, step forward uh, and come up to you and... and, and and say, if you would follow me, I will take you to your uh, audience with the Empress. And he bows very, very low. And then gestures toward, towards the, the uh, door door of the, the inn that you're staying in. Let's do it. Okay. So he takes you to um, the f familiar, uh, one of the familiar teleportation buildings that you you've been to before um everyone uh, else uh, uh in uh, uh the building is is required to to step out as they reconfigure the circle to teleport you to inside the palace um and uh as you uh, uh do i get you, a look at the circle um make me uh, make make me an arcana check That is a 23. Okay. Uh, you get a pretty decent uh, look at it um, to where uh, if, if you were to see that circle again, you um, you could recognize it. As far as uh, something like being able to like memorize it for um, use, uh, uh, you're uh, f fairly certain it would take significantly more study because there's there's more than just remembering the shape there's s study you have to do into the intricacies of it to to actually scribe a, a teleportation circle or 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 things like that so um supposedly only a minute so i have less than a minute yes you yeah they they reconfigure okay. it and teleport you so okay and it's uh it's it's kind of like um <laughs> to give you guys information 
one of my party tricks I used to be able to do is I could memorize a credit card in less than 60 seconds. Um, numbers were my thing. Uh, mm-hmm. And I mentioned that when I worked in retail. I'm like, yeah, I can mem- memorize a credit card plus the three digits on the back in 60 seconds or less. And one of my associates turned to me and went, uh, sh- should you be telling us that? <laughs> I'm like, you yeah, why? It's like, well, how can anyone trust you with their card? I'm like, well, first of all, I, I customers don't give me their credit cards for 60 seconds. Like, I just swipe it. Second of all, if I'm memorizing a credit card, everyone will know. It is not like I casually glance and just automatically, no, I have to sit there and drill the numbers into my head for 60 seconds. And that's kind of what um, that uh, uh, teleportation circle is very similar to. It's it's not that you, oh, you look at it for 60 seconds. You're sitting there and you're, you're scribing it in your spell book and that. Like, it's it's not uh, something a casual glance could do. You you have to work sure. at it. Sounds good. Um, so, uh, yeah, you guys, again, flash of light. You are uh, met by a familiar face, uh, the uh, same gentleman that had led you into the uh, chambers beforehand and had, had led you to uh, the um, treasury room to get your reward. Uh, he looks at you. He, he bows. He goes, it will be this way. Please follow me. And he takes you on a f- familiar-ish trip through um, some winding corridors. And you uh, come to a, a, a different room than the room you met the Empress in before. Be- before you were uh, in uh, the main audience chamber, which had her throne and uh, the prince's throne. Um, now you're in their, their private dining room, which is off uh, of the uh, audience chamber and is immaculate. Uh, the table itself easily could sit 20 to 30 people. Um, and the room is actually large enough that more tables could be put in here. Like this is um, s- slightly under like a ballroom as far as size is concerned, but much larger than just a dining area. Um, and uh, you are, are, are hmm, you are shown to your seats and then uh, uh, servants uh, come by with a um, selection of of different things to drink, uh, both uh, the adult variety and uh, um, more uh, things, everything from water to fruit juices and, you know, other things like that all the way up through hard liquor. So um, starting with, I guess we'll start with Fade since you're on the left. Um, presented with options, what do you choose? Is there anything laid out in the uh, where we assume the Empress might be? Like, does she have like a super beautiful cup anywhere? Um, she uh, uh, she actually hasn't entered the room yet. Uh, well, is there, there, is there like a place where she might be sitting? Like, a, oh yeah, she a, she'll, a, she'll be sitting at the head of the table, and and the Prince Consort uh, will be sitting to her left. Like, there are very specific chairs that are uh, uh, obviously for them. Is there any poor drinks in front of said spot? Uh, n- no, just a table setting. Then I will not take anything. Okay. Kata. Uh, I keep looking at people because that's what I used to do in my D and D games. Is <laughs> I just look at them. You guys can't tell that I'm looking at you, especially since I'm looking at you on OBS. So I'm not even looking at your picture in Roll Twenty. Uh, so what are we uh, choosing? Uh, just a, a drink. Um, oh. Were you wanting just more plain water, something, you know, fun and, and fruity and bubbly, something alcoholic? Uh, eh, something, yeah, uh, fruity. Okay. So, you're going to uh, rot your teeth, kid. What? You're going to rot your teeth, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so they, uh, uh, they, um. You, you probably say that to your daughter all the time. Uh, they, uh, they pour you, um, this, uh. Uh, kind of strange concoction where they they pour some fruit juice and then they pour some uh, uh, water in it and then 
uh, you watch them work a little bit of magic and you can see bubbles start forming and uh, you can actually see uh, for a second uh, little bits of, uh, of little sparks and things like that that come off of it that seem to be just a, a, a sensory effect. Um, but it, you know, just adds to the, the spectacle of it. And they give it to you in this, this very tall, um, uh, tall glass with a short stem on it and uh, obviously crystal. Um, very nice. And, and as you kind of smell it, it you kind of get this bouquet of different fruits, of, most of which you can't identify. There's some citrus in there. There's you know, some other flavors and, and a quick taste. It's, it's very pleasing. It's got some tartness to it. It tickles your nose as you, you drink a little bit of it. Very much a fun drink. Yeah. Uh, Avok. Fizz me up. Um, are you looking for hard, uh, ale, you know, brewed stuff, uh, hard liquor? Um... This will be one of the few times, like the, the hotel you're at has a pretty decent selection of alcohols. Um, this is going to be one of the, the few times that you have access to the, the best there is to offer. In <laughs> Give me area. the best shit. Okay. Um, so they have uh, 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 the equivalent of, of, of like bourbon whiskey style stuff uh, or wine. <laughs> Oh, I'll take the bourbon whiskey shit. Okay. So they, they pour you uh, in this, this crystal tumbler. Uh, they pour you uh, a good two fingers. Um, and uh, a again, as you um, kind of smell it at first, like you can smell kind of the oakiness of the, the cask that was uh, used to age it. Like it, it the smell of it um, almost takes you on a journey by itself. And as you try some of the whiskey, it's, it's smooth. It goes down. It coats your throat the entire way down. You get that nice warm feeling uh, in your stomach as it settles there. Like this is a, a nice, nice bourbon. Um, Willow. Yep. Um, Willow looks very appreciative at Kata's drink and the bubbles. And is just like thinking about how it, how it all worked. Yeah, you um, did kind of observe as they were putting things in and kind of filed away a couple because you recognize the magic that they're using to make the bubbles and, yeah. and and so you just filed away like three different ideas for drinks while they were pouring uh, hers yeah uh, and I, I'd love whatever wine you recommend um, Certainly. anything and uh, they they, they uh, come around and uh, they they um, uh, they uncork uh, uh, a bottle that seems relatively old, um, uh, green glass. Um, they 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 offer the uh, the cork to you uh, to um, to to smell it. Mm -hmm. You smell no cork, so obviously it has not been uh, the seal hasn't been broken. And then they pour you this uh, uh, nice deep red. Um, wine, and as you you know, kind of let it warm a little bit in your hand, um, smell it a little bit. It's it's a very, uh, uh, very uh, sweet, rich uh, red wine, uh, and as you you taste a little bit of it, uh, again you can feel a very kind of wide flavor uh, to it. You know, it um, you can definitely taste uh, the grapes and everything uh, in it, and and um, uh, and it just has that, that slight hint of, um, something more, uh, to it. Very, really nice. One of the, one of the best wines you've ever had. So as you all sit there, uh, with your drinks, um, uh, you see, um, someone at the door, uh, go, uh, the eternal empress and the prince consort. And he bows and, uh, uh, all the servants uh, stand up a little bit straighter, and um, uh, the the ones closest to you uh, just kind of whisper, uh, "You're supposed to rise." Oh, yeah, we do that. And uh, yeah. they they come in, they sit down, and then you see 
uh, the the uh, uh, servants kind of gesture for you to sit as well. Um, and then the the servants start bringing in uh, food. And serve the Empress and uh, Prince Consort first, and then you guys have basically anything you could want. There's there's fruits, there's there's salads and things like that. There's you know roasted meats and things. There's breads and and um, some casseroles and things like that, and and a few dishes that you're not really quite sure what they are, but they smell good. And. Uh, the um, uh, the Empress uh, kind of uh, turns to uh, all of her servants and goes, We will be fine. You may all leave. We will call you if we need anything else. And she kind of waits for him to all leave. And then she turns to you. Please do not sit upon formality. Help yourselves. Mm. We have prepared this um, in recognition of your victory in a very difficult situation. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Avak just starts mm. digging in, being the also charming barbarian that he is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, I got to start digging in too. And so throughout dinner, like they, they make polite conversation uh, uh, for a little bit. And uh, is, is there anything specifically during the polite conversation part uh, any information you guys would like to, to talk about specifically or? I would like to uh, not even really subtly, but like politely, I guess, mm -hmm. um, talk, drop hints about uh, being hasty in our previous decisions. I'm just beating around the bush, not saying we were wrong to say no to helping her before, mm -hmm. but I'm just trying to drop the hints and like, prepare her to open a conversation. And as you, you do it more, she, she kind of acknowledges things. And as you get a little bit more blatant with it, she kind of turns to you and goes, we understand. We took no offense at your refusal before, nor was the offer ever taken off the table. If you wish to go down that route, we can discuss that at a later date, the reason for this particular meal, other than to congratulate you on your winning, is to talk about what our investigators have discovered about your would-be assassin. By all means, please. Uh, and this is where the Prince Consort steps in. Well, we've been doing uh, our best to shelter the um, populace of Alanduil from most of the war. They, they know it exists, but for the most part they can ignore it because nothing happens inside these walls. And we work very hard to ensure that every so often things like this happen. And generally, they are they are small. They are very easy to hide and very easy to clean up. That this was another matter entirely. Um, and then the uh, the empress speaks up. Yes, um, the man that that attacked you, or creature, I guess would be a more appropriate term at that point used to be a changeling from the aqueous realm. They with the fact that we are so welcoming to refugees from the elemental kingdoms every so often a changeling infiltrator will be able to make it in and will attempt to cause havoc inside the city. Um, we thought we had fixed the problem using some magical wards on the gates and training our guards better, but this is an, a new realm for them. 
and the the prince speaks up. What she's referring to, they they've made assassination attempts against the empress on on many occasions. Uh, obviously, they've never succeeded, and they've attempted to assassinate some generals, uh, but but everything has been military targets, things that would help them win the war. And we assume they, they do the same thing in uh, the Tempest Sovereignty, in uh, the, the, the Commonwealth, in the Dominion. Uh, that's just how they fight their wars. And the Changelings are very, very good at, at infiltration um, due to their obvious ability to change their shape and, and face at will. But this is the first time they have ever targeted someone that was not a military target or a political target. Mm. And that raised some flags. First of all, with the fact that they were... The combatant that you faced is a two-time finalist in this uh, competition. We, we hold it every year, and we hold lesser versions of it every two to three months. This particular challenger has made it to the finals twice and lost twice to our current champion. While investigating, we didn't find a body or anything that would suggest that the changeling infiltrated and killed the former combatant that she impersonated. So this agent had been here for years and destroyed their cover to kill you. That does not bode well for any of us. Especially since the fact that you are here and the specifics of what you're doing are not known outside this city. Yes, news of your arrival spread fairly quickly. The, the ambush was was uh, a proof of, of that, but Since you have been in the city, you have been under our watch. Information about you has been specifically stopped. People that interact with you have been encouraged not to speak about you. We've done everything we can to hide your presence. Even putting, using magic wards to prevent scrying in order to keep you safe. And yet, this person not only was able to figure out where you were, but was able to manipulate the roster to the point where they could get one of you alone. It was unfortunate for them that they chose your small friend here. I... Apparently, our ability to keep secrets was good enough for them to uh, severely underestimate her abilities. But this brings a new face to what is going on. You are now targets of two separate elemental kingdoms. And to be honest, the only, I assume the only reason that the Dominion uh, and the Commonwealth haven't taken swings at you is that they can't get their agents into our city. Most of the fighting with them happens at the front, and they're very good at it. That worries both of us. 
Never before has have the elemental kingdoms ever had the same goal as they do now. With your apparent demise. It sounds to me like you have an opportunity. And what opportunity would that be? If uh, us being here has somehow shifted the balance or turned the table and their focus is on us, if rather than hiding our location, perhaps we let that slip, they might focus some of their forces upon us, setting up opportunities for ambushes or pushes along fronts where we are not. Uh, and the, the, the prince speaks up. That was one of the tactics I thought of. However, the reactions to you have been very different and thus far unpredictable. Um, we're, we're not even 100% sure this person was trying to kill Kata. We know that they engineered a situation where they would be alone together and would be able to make attacks without it looking bizarre. But he could have just as easily used his considerable skill in necromancy to control uh, her in some way or to turn her in some way. Or indeed capture her and sequester her away to somewhere else. We we cannot guarantee that if we attempted to use you as bait, that it would do anything beyond put you in more danger. It's a promising idea, but we would need more information before we could... In, in, before I would feel comfortable uh, putting your lives in danger in that way. We don't even know their, their goal. If we could get a prisoner to interrogate that knew of a plan against you, or anyone, really, that understands why you have become this fixation that you have become. Yes, you're interplanar travelers, but unless something has changed recently, you have no way of getting back to the prime material plane. And even if you did, the portal to get there is within a land will. Any of the elemental kingdoms would have to breach our walls in order to use any knowledge you had of opening the gateway again. So we have been presented with more questions than we have answers. But we can tell you it was from the aqueous realm and um, yes, and unfortunately once death took this creature, uh, the remains uh, decayed at such an accelerated rate we weren't able to investigate almost anything. However, if, if, if you have more knowledge of what is going on that you'd be willing to share with us, we might have a better picture of why they, they find you so valuable. Can I? Oh, boy. Um, so I, I look at her. Mm -hmm. Not to, like, throw a wrench in what you just said, but I, I specifically cast a spell on those remains so this wouldn't happen. Like, right as the fight, and I, I took the coins and I cast Gentle Repose on on the, on the, on the skull. I, I believe that was to prevent it from raise, raising again, right? Well, it protects it from decay and can't become undead. Mm, I was so, not aware of that spell effect. I thought it just stopped them from being undead. Yeah, I was, I was super interested in interrogating <laughs> this thing. No, so can I, I, I in-game like, talk to him and say, who who is handling the remains? Um, 
Can they be trusted? And he, he, he looks at you and, and gives this kind of incredulous look. Well, our investigators, they, um, I mean, it, it, it's not uncommon for those animated through necromancy. Their, their remains, once the necromatic magic is, is removed from them, their remains uh, accelerate their decay. I mean, that's a, it's a fairly common thing. Why, why do you ask? Uh, in, in my studies from my previous life, I, uh, I found ways to prevent that from happening. And the enchantment I placed on those remains after it died, those remains should still be viable. I don't know. Perhaps something else is at work, but I've dealt with similar things before. And to me, and I apologize for making assumptions and accusations here, but I think somewhere in your chain of command or custody, someone's lying to you. Uh, and you watch the uh, uh, the queen make a, um, a movement with, with her hand, and her lips move, but you don't really see anything. Uh, Willow, you recognize as, recognize this as a whisper spell, and you see uh, a servant uh, come in, uh, and she goes, um, "Bring me the lead investigator." Um, and um, ensure someone else brings us the captain of the guard and 12 of his finest and most trustworthy men. Do not tell the lead investigator about the guards. At once, my mistress, my empress. And he walks away. Uh, she uh, goes, I'm very sorry to cut this meal short, but I do believe we're about to have an unpleasant conversation. She waves mm -hmm. her hand and you watch as the food um, disappears and the table starts to move out of the way. If you would be kind enough to prepare yourselves, I sincerely doubt the Prince Consort and I will have any difficulty subduing him but if things go wrong, I would prefer to have you ready. I'm going to try to grab like an apple or something, extra some extra food that I can toss to Avok after the table's gone. Okay, <laughs> you do. Uh, so uh, any any prep work that you guys want to want to do? Is anyone yeah. banged up from the fight? Oh, I'm good. Are we healed? You you took a you short healed, rest, but... so you you would have been able to um uh spend any I any the hit dice. Also helped. Oh yeah, and the the clerics came over and, and healed you guys. So so we should be good. Yep. The only thing you would be down is any spell slots you would have used. Arcane recovery. I'll cast a spiritual weapon on my gauntlet as soon as he right before it, we as we hear them approaching. Oh, oh, okay. I'm just chowing down the apple. And Willow casts a subtler version of mage armor on herself than okay. the original one. Um, so uh, you guys uh, see um, the uh, uh, you, you see um, a, a very uh, suave looking gentleman slicked back black hair um uh, skin that's a, a little bit paler than than you're used to seeing uh, uh, here. Like he just doesn't get a lot of sunlight, um, and uh, he's wearing very very fine garments. You can see he he has uh, a, a really ornate necklace that um, as as he comes into the room, he's just kind of fiddling with it and things like that. And as he comes in, uh, uh, he bows very very low. And then as he gets up, he sees the rest of you and goes, I'm terribly sorry, but uh, exactly what's going on here? I'm just like whistling, looking around. Um, well, it's been brought to our attention that 
Something strange has happened with the body. Well, I wish I could uh, tell you more about it, but as I told you before, with necromancy and things like this, there's generally not much of a corpse to deal with. And, well, this particular lich was very powerful and seems to have put uh, some additional... Uh, safeguards on his body uh, it's it's gone there was there was nothing i could do yes no you you've told us that and and we uh we understand that and we've been discussing it with our friends here and we've we've made a startling discovery mm. our good friend fade here has revealed that in his devotion to his deity, he has he has studied the the passage of life into death, and well, he he seems like someone that that would be a an asset to your investigation into this body. Well, as I told you before, that there is no body. It's it's gone. See, that's the most fascinating thing about this, because according to him, there should be. And he starts getting a little more quiet. You see him, you know, he's fiddling with his necklace even more, and he's kind of looking around. I'm sorry, Your Highness. Um, exactly what are you suggesting can, here. Can I have us inside check him? Because sure. he seems very suspicious. Sure. Oh, whoops. Okay. Go ahead and, and roll up inside. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Okay. Uh, 17 plus 4, 21. 21. Okay. Um, so, um, looking at him, uh, he is really smooth. Um, to the point where again you're not particularly good at, at, at reading um, people as, as much as you are at, at, at sensing emotions in that um, but something that that you've seen before um, in in animals is this kind of uh, uh, over uh, uh, front of calmness that's meant to disarm uh, either predator or prey, you've, you've seen it used both directions where they, they project this overwhelming sense of calm and, and, and it's, and it's meant to disarm their opponents so that they could either defend themselves and get away or catch the target. Um, and, uh, that's kind of what you're getting from him. Like you can, you can see that he's, he seems to be very calm aside from just fiddling with this necklace a little bit, which the casual observer would just see as a, you know, uh, a, an affectation. You kind of see this calm front and, and very suave attitude is definitely masking something. Um, but uh, not, uh, you, you can't tell what it's masking, unfortunately. Um, uh, fade, uh, if, so I can tell he's... Uh... Definitely hiding something. Well, the the calm expression that he's putting forth is is not what he's feeling. You can't actually tell what he's feeling. It it could be this is how he always deals with the Empress. It it could be that he's he's nervous. It could be that he's angry. You can't tell. He is he is so good at projecting this aura of calm. The only thing you can tell is that it is a projection, not what he's actually feeling. I, I, her hair seems to you know, bristle, up, bristle up a little okay. to the side. Uh, hey, she, she says his eyes are not what he seems. And he kind of... Well, those hands just... Sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if Kata's actually growling, Willow's hand just kind of tightens just gently on her arm to keep her from jumping yet but just like a cautious weight um so as she 
as, as Kata kind of growls and, and, and says this, he, he kind of turns to you and goes, well, seems like the kitten has fangs. It's impressive. <laughs> While this is happening, uh, Fade, were you uh, attempting to... Yeah, I was trying to like politely interrupt and uh, mm-hmm. ask the Empress, if you'll give me some leeway, may I assist you in this? Are you... Uh, asking the uh, the, the empress, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm going I'm mechanically I'm trying to cast zone of truth on this dude. Oh, oh okay. Um, the empress uh, kind of cuts you off before uh, you can finish, and okay. just kind of catches your eye and gives you a knowing nod, saying, "You know, you you get the idea just through not." verbal communication, whatever you want to do, do it. I, uh, I turn my back on him so you can't see what I'm casting and I will do so. And as soon as you, you turn, uh, your back, he goes, what are you doing? And he starts feeling, uh, magic. He goes, blast it all. Well, it's fun while it lasted. And he rips the uh, necklace off and throws him to the ground. And, uh, I need, Everybody to make dexterity saves for me. Okay. Oh, you the danger sense. Thank God for danger sense. Uh, that's a uh, nineteen. Okay. Ten. Okay. I rolled an eight. I was getting a little too. I wasn't paying attention. Well, you had your back turned. Yep. Yep. Three. Yes. Okay, yep. so uh, Avok, you're the only one that saves. Oh, I have a sense for these things. Uh, so ah! 26 damage to everybody that doesn't save the first time. Um, give me another save, please. The first time? Yeah. Cool. Like, do I take half damage? or? Uh, you take uh, half damage unless your danger sense lets you take no damage. Uh, it doesn't have that capability. It's, it's so. fire damage, if that matters to you. Uh, yeah, so I'm taking that. Okay. okay. All right. And another one. Uh, okay. That's a uh, 20. Okay. Fate. 21. Got to. Four. Okay. And Willow. Five. Five. Okay. So Katz and Willow fail this one. The other guys save for mm-hmm. 28. Fire damage. Uh, And you see a a third explosion coming towards you. And then suddenly you see uh, a wall of ice uh, just flare up in front of you. And it melts almost immediately from what looks like six more fireballs just melt this wall away. Um, But the wall uh, takes them fast enough. And you see... Uh, the Empress just holding her hands out and you don't see the Prince Consort uh, anymore. Um, I'm going to have everyone go ahead and roll initiative for me. Yes! Mm-hmm. Yes! Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, that's a six. So we're, we're, we're going up. <laughs> Bat in a thousand today. Uh, start with Avok. What do we got? Different day Uh, 13. 13. Fade? 21. 22. Uh, Kata? 18 plus 7. 25. Oh, dear Lord. Wow. Uh, and then Willow is just at the back. Uh, Kata, you are the first person to react. Um, so we, you look over to see the Prince Consort. He is no longer there. Um, mm-hmm. when you look over, uh, uh, to see, um, this, uh, investigator, he's running towards the door, but you are, I should probably roll him. Where did my dice go? He's not gonna, I don't, he doesn't have the ability to roll higher than you. Yeah, he Yeah, did. yeah. Um, so you see him start running towards one of the doors and you can see him starting to whisper a spell, but you having already had that, that, uh, anticipation behind it um you're able to to uh kind of act before 
uh, he's able to do anything. What, uh, what, what do you want to do? Mm. Uh. We can do that again. We're not going to do whole full on combat or anything like that. So feel free to, you know, cinematic, uh, this up, you know, just describe a, a, a situation. Uh, how, how far away is he from me? Uh, it's a small dining room, so you can get there. You can get to him easily. I can. Well, I mean, I it's a big dining room, but I mean, still, it's a room. Uh, can I run up and try to use the thorn whip to uh, restrain him? Yeah, definitely. Go ahead and, and make a magic uh, attack roll. Okay. This in a while. Mm. Uh, it's probably not gonna hit. That's uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, more than enough. As he's as he's going, you you sit there, and as you extend your hand, uh, uh this vine just kind of shoots out, wraps around uh, his leg, and you see these thorns kind of sprout after it's wrapped, and you yank him back towards you. Uh, as he turns, um, he uh, places his hand uh, on the, the thorn whip itself, uh, and you watch as fire burst from it. Um, and while, yeah, you, you do basically pull him right to you, uh, the fire... Uh, completely destroys uh, the thorn whip shortly after he's moved. Uh, and he, he turns and, and looks at you in anger. And you can see, like, his plan is now changing. Um, At the response, I, yeah, I turn into an earth elemental. <laughs> okay. So he sits there, and you see him starting to... Uh, I mean, you can feel a little bit of necromatic energy coming from him. And then you grow, like, three feet. And his expression changes very quickly. But before he can do anything, Fade... I'd like to maybe step in front of him. Well, technically, Kata is in front of him, so you can be beside her, or you can flank him. Oh, I'll just stand next to my good friend, the giant uh, beast of a child. Yeah. And uh, I think... Can I just try to grapple him? If, just help help him or help her? If if, if you'd like, it'll be uh, an athletics check. Yeah. He looks Locking super 11. buff. Uh, really? Because I've rolled a 12 on the dice and he has nothing to add to it. He wins. So as you sit there, you, you try and wrestle him. He comes around um, quicker than you really ex would expect. Uh, he he kind of... Um, uh, twists your, your wrist a little bit and uh, you feel a pain in your forehead as he palm hand strikes you right. Attempting to break your nose, he misses the mark, uh, but it's enough to, to, to snap your head back and daze you for a couple of seconds. Uh, I don't know. Any, anything else you want to do? Yeah, I want to hit over my spiritual weapon. Uh, okay. So the spiritual weapon manifests itself uh, behind him and he turns... Um, and out of, uh, and out of nowhere, you watch him just kind of grasp at nothing and a blade of shadows appears and he deflects the weapon out of the air. Um, that was awesome. And, uh, turns around, he turns around and he seems to be, um, turning around to plunge the blade in, into, uh, you, uh, but before he's able to do that though, Avok. I rolled a 10 on his initiative. <laughs> All right. Um, he he well, didn't put much into his, his dex or, or, or strength. He's a very intellectual kind of guy. Well, he ain't going to be so smart because I'm sure his back has turned to me. Uh, technically, no, because they were both standing side by side. However, you, you can you can flank him. Like again, he's close enough, especially after Kata yanked him. Oh, I'm gonna have a little fun with this. Um, so, yes, I'm gonna flank him. Uh, I'm going well. I'm of course rage, um, and 
I'm gonna grapple him and try to suplex his bitch ass and pin him to the floor. Okay. Um, he does have this shadow blade. Um, so there is some slight additional danger uh, in attempting to grapple him currently. Because the, the, the blade itself, it's kind of like a lightsaber. You know, if it just touches you, it's going to cause damage. So yeah. um, go ahead and, and make your uh, make your athletics check. With the message. That's uh, 22. He got a four. <laughs> so as you sit there, uh, uh, kind of describe what you're doing. Because he has this blade. He's he's about to plunge it into Fade's stomach. Um, okay, so, so as... it towards Fade, you run up behind him. Right, I pretty much go full Nelson and just... <laughs> like... Uh, Take him back and like to the floor. Okay. His head like goes. Ugh. All right. So you sit there and you 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 flip it. Uh, 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 you flip him back. Um, uh, uh, you're a little bit surprised when after he hits the ground, his legs wrap around you, which you understand anatomy pretty well from taking people apart. That's not possible in the position you have him in because his oh. legs wrap uh, uh, around your shoulders and actually come up and go around your throat. And you start feeling uh, the two uh, arteries in your neck uh, start to get uh, pinched and you start getting that, that very slight bit of, of tunnel vision. I'll let you decide if you want to try and let him go and, and, and do that, or just hold on to him for, for dear life as, as, uh, you, you start to pass out. I'm going to hold on to him. Okay. So as you're sitting there, uh, holding on to him, he wasn't quite expecting that. He kind of assumed that as soon as you felt that, um, you feel uh, the the shadow blade brushing against your skin and, and blistering it and stuff, but the position that you have him in and the fact that he's already contorted his body in a way it's not supposed to, it just doesn't seem like the, the blade can get purchase uh, and, and, and actually do any damage to you. Um, as the lights are, are starting to dim, um, you hear an incredibly loud sound. Um, and you are blown backwards with him. Um, he seems to have used uh, Thunder Wave as a way to propel himself, and you are attached to him. So you both kind of get propelled up uh, and over Kata and Fade, uh, and both kind of land sprawled on the ground. Uh, but he is able to break your, your grip using Force uh. Movement. Um, Fuck you. But you're you're conscious and have a headache. Um, Willow, you s see this happen, um, and he lands. Uh, he technically lands on his feet, but he also lands on his back because his body is not uh, in the right shape anymore. Like his legs are completely twisted in the wrong direction. Um, like his spine should be broken at this particular point. Uh, and he definitely does not look good. Uh, so seeing him do that, w w what do you want to do? Um, Willow's pretty beaten up. Doesn't want to get near that. <clears throat> and just looks at him and says, enough of that? Blows across her hand and casts Bigby's hand, and want, I want yeah! to try and grapple him with Bigby's hand. So you guys watch. Is, do you have a, a a color preference or describe your hand? Um, <laughs> it's so beautiful. I, mean, I imagine it as most of her magic is purple and silver. So okay, let's say okay. swirling purple and silver. So you see this this hand kind of form very 80s style where you see this outline of, of silver glowing light and this uh, 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 
hand of, of, of purple come down and just smashes the ground next to him. He startles, he, he twists his body back into a shape more resembling a human. And then the hand comes around and, and starts to grip him. It's still uh, an athletics check using Big B strength. Yes. Which I believe is a 26 or 24, something like that. He is a 26. So I just got a uh, 22. Weren't you rolling Should well I... before? Yeah, no, that's better. <laughs> uh, and so uh, you sit there and you, you close around him. And as he tries to wriggle and move, uh, the hand cl closes around and, and, and grips him. And then you watch him melt in your hand and just turns into this puddle of weirdness underneath Big B's hand and starts to try and, and run away again as, as Big B's hand is just kind of gripping at nothing. Kata, you are up next. Or no, actually, um, this is where the Prince Consort uh, appears. And uh, he comes in and uh, bashes with uh, his uh, 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 a sword. He just slams it into the ground in the middle of this puddle. And I should roll for him. Which is probably bad. I should make you guys roll for... Oh, shit. No, he had advantage because he was prone. I rolled a nat one. That's better. Uh, he slams his sword and you see this... Um, you, you smell this very acidic, acrid smell as it slams uh, into this, this creature. Uh, and you watch it revert back to the form that you guys saw before and get knocked back and smacks Kata in the back. Oh. Um, which, again, it's it's a puny humanoid, so oh. you're a rock, so it just yeah. kind of bounces off of you. Uh, what the... <laughs> um, and then uh, the, the, the Empress uh, sits there and just starts kind of rotating her hand, and as she does it, this swirling vortex of cold just starts sitting there, and you watch him get slower and slower and slower and stop moving. Yeah. Uh, and she just continues to kind of hold him there. Um, Kata, is there, there anything else you, you, you want to do? He seems stuck. And just in case he tries to move again, I will, like, uh... I will try to pin him with the floor with a foot. Um, as you move, uh, you realize uh, kind of like um, <clears throat> frozen water or, or rubber, things like that. He doesn't oh. have any kind of uh, give to him. So you, th you, you, you're pretty certain if you step on him, you will break him. Uh, okay. And uh, I remember what much I... Fade did in order for this guy to uh, not come back. Uh, I'll just uh, be at the ready in case okay. things go sour. All right. So um, as you guys are, 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 are all standing there, uh, the doors to the room open and you see a dozen guards and the guard captain uh, come in and they all have glaives pointed at him and these very large tower shields. Um, uh, and uh, the queen is still sitting there, and, and, and she yells, Get, get one of my uh, clerics now! And uh, they go off, and she continues to see there, and you guys can start seeing sweat starting to drip down, and the prince consort comes over, and he kind of puts his hand on his sho on on her shoulder and and just kind of you know reassures you reassures her and seems to be supporting her in any way she can. It takes another couple minutes and you see a cleric come in and she says, "Bind this creature." And fade you recognize as the cleric starts casting hold um, hold monster. Um, and uh, these bands of uh, yellow light come down and just bind the creature. And you see it trying to say things and 
uh, Fade, having seen this spell used in, in a very similar way before in the Eladrin Empire, you're relatively certain nobody needs to hear what he's saying. <laughs> um, uh, but she, uh, uh, she turns, she goes, um, she says, do not let this creature... Do not end this spell on this creature until you have him sealed in a place where even magic cannot reach him. And they go, yes, my empress. And they, uh, the guards pick up uh, him up and, 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 and leave. I, I make sure to stand over where his uh, shadow sword was and try to like slide, slide it behind me with my foot or something. Uh, as, as soon as he, uh, uh, as soon as he opened his hand, the the blade disappeared. Damn shard blades! Yeah, it's a, it's a cool ability, but uh, yeah, it, it the sword doesn't exist when it's not touching him. Yeah, that's a fun spell. Uh, so uh, the guard captain uh, uh, looks to the empress, and he he looks c- confused as hell, and he sees the rest of you, and the rest of the guards kind of very slowly move their glaives, kind of pointing towards you guys. And the prince consort just kind of holds his hands up. He goes, thank you. You are no longer needed. And the guard captain, looking even more confused, goes, yes, my prince. And then they just all kind of very slowly file out. And the empress turns to um, uh, you and uh, says, well, that was interesting. Um, I, I must thank you for your aid in helping to out this spy amongst my ranks. I have known the lead inspector for decades. And the fact that, well, we'll have to see if the infiltration has been going on for that long, I fear I don't know who to trust anymore. We're pretty cool. And as you say that, uh, uh, you hear a voice behind you go, I know exactly who you can trust. No one in the entire palace. And you turn around and you see the familiar form of an Eladrin male, black hair. Now that he's a little bit closer, you can see he has a scar over his left eye. His face is covered currently and he's wearing a hood. Uh, but the room is bright enough that the hood doesn't really conceal as, as much as he'd like. And over his uh, black clothing, uh, dark clothing, he wears a tabard to uh, the uh, with his symbol of the Dark Lady. And instantly, the sword, uh, the prince's sword, is is up and uh, at his throat. And just as instantly, uh, the uh, 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 the uh, monk is no longer there uh, and is standing next to Fade just kind of leaning on your shoulder what's up buddy are we done with this or do I have to make your prince feel bad about himself I, I, oh boy <laughs> I don't want to insult the prince but uh I mean, I just met him, but I think we have an understanding. He helped with the whole... The Empress goes, explain yourself. Who are you? And uh, he turns to you. I do not recognize your authority. I am called to a higher purpose. (laughs) And for the first time, the very calm, collected appearance of, of the Empress drops for like half a second. And you just see just the idea of the audacity of this person. Um, and uh, 
she she starts to speak and uh the prince consort uh, uh again just points his blade this time instead of going close enough to put it up to him and he goes every person in the verdant empire is under her authority she is the eternal empress she rules this land who are you to say otherwise and he goes i serve a greater purpose and so does this one though he seems to be worse at it than i am <laughs> and he just kind of uh, acknowledges you fade <coughs> oh, sorry coughs hard fight if i hadn't let you win you would have been out of that contest already mm-hmm. <laughs> To be perfectly honest, I was quite upset that the first match that we had was against each other. I was hoping to be able to watch you from inside the tournament much longer. Though with what's recently happened, I don't even know if the tournament is going to continue. Uh, And the Prince Consort goes, I'm very sorry for interrupting this conversation, but who the hell are you? And he turns and goes, You do not know my name, and that is a testament to how very good I am at what it is that I do. I'm called Aether. And I aid the Dark Lady in quickening people into her presence. And uh, the, the prince goes, so you are an assassin. Call me what you like. I'm very good at what I do. I got in here with all of your gods and magical spells and all this. It's remarkable how little you think of those of us that don't use magic. It's impressive, to be honest. you so focused on your magic and your wards and things that a simple pair of lockpicks can get me uh, significantly further than... Uh, any uh, uh, any magic spells or anything like that. What is it you want? Well, I prefer... Really? Sorry, my... Um, he, he turns to you, he's like, well, I'd prefer to keep this one alive, and seeing as he seems so attached to the rest of them, uh, uh, I guess keep them alive as well, and the longer they stay with you, it seems the harder that's going to be. And, and Do the I goes, you, uh, b- b- before you, uh, can figure that out. The prince goes, your sure. impotence. Uh, that's not the word I was looking for. Is it? <laughs> no, I, I look at the prince. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm on, like, I'm going through some stuff. I don't know words. Um, it's okay. I really, it's like, for the life of me, goodness. I cannot tell you what word I'm, I'm thinking of, but I know it's not impotence. Impudence. Impudence, thank you. He thinks it is. (laughs) For the life of me, I'm like, that's not the word. Uh, He goes, your impudence will get you. And as he sits there, you see the the queen get her calm back. And she goes, my love, stay your sword. Let him speak. I must tell you, please choose your next words very carefully, for as much as you may dista- dislike our focus and, and appreciation of magic, I can assure you, if you insult me again, you will find out exactly how useful my magic is in Ooh. making your life end very quickly and let you meet this goddess you serve. 
and he uh, uh, kind of looks at her and he, he gives a little bow. I'm so very sorry, my empress. But again, I serve a higher power, and this one here has started a few things in motion that I've been waiting my entire life for. So you'll forgive me if I don't show the proper respect now. We don't, we quite literally don't have time. I need to get these four out of here now. Bye. Willow, you, you had something you wanted to. I, I just want to know if I trust the fact that he wants to keep fate alive. Uh, roll an insight check. I don't fucking know. It's a one. He's still wearing a mask. You got, you you can't read him at all. Cool. I got a seventeen. Um, he's still wearing a mask. Um, and yeah. he has his his body language is not <clears throat> betraying anything, which is impressive to you because most people don't have that kind of control over their body language. Friggin' can ninja. I, can I take out a coin? <laughs> And say, look at Aether and say, Aether, I'm going to give you this coin and I'm going to do a task for you. And someday I'm going to come back to this coin. Asshole. Okay, what's that a reference to? It's a, a very, very long story. I'll, I'll tell you after the game. Uh, um, he just he, hmm. he just looks at you, shakes his head a little bit. Can we, if uh, he, he turns to the Empress, if you want to come with us, it's absolutely fine. I know an actual safe location in your palace that you're not aware of. Um, we can go there now, but we need to not be here. The people that are here in about, oh, five minutes time are going to be dead. Even with all of your magical power and, and mystical, this is bigger than you. This is bigger than the war. This is bigger than the Empire. And she, for the first time since you met her, you see just the slightest glimpse of fear. She goes, I know this palace. I know every room, every corridor. Simply tell me where we are meant to go and I can take you there, take us there. No, you can't. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. You need to trust me. She looks at him. She she looks at you, Fade. I mean... He did help. Well, not this time. You had this one pretty well controlled. I just kind of watched. It was rather amusing to, to watch, to be honest. Okay, I'm getting really bored here. Can we move along? Certainly, and you see him take a, a small uh, sphere from uh, uh, inside, uh, 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 from underneath his tabard, and he throws it on the ground, and the, oh, the room shit. is filled with smoke. Um, and you guys start coughing and gasping, and uh, Kata, you, you're the first one to realize the temperature in the room changes. Ninja and as vanish. the... Uh, as the uh, the um, uh, smoke clears. You guys are in a place that none of you recall except Fade. It looks somewhat familiar because it is obviously a temple to the Dark Lady. And it's relatively large. Um, the, the, the room itself is, is about 30 feet wide. Uh, the, the ceiling goes up to about 20 feet. Um, it's about... Um, uh, 40 feet long and you can see an, an altar to the Dark Lady uh, at, at the far end and uh, no doors, no windows nothing and the Empress is looking around going what is we are not in the palace anymore I've never seen this I can explain all of the mumbo jumbo later. I didn't create it. I just use them. They're very useful. Um, 
but I have to do something quickly, and you're coming with me. And he just grabs uh, you, Fade, and takes you over to the altar and kind of pushes you down to a, a kneeling position and kneels beside you and, and makes a sign and go uh, and uh, uh, says, thank her. And you see him offer a, a little prayer of thanks to the dark lady that you've heard people utter when they kind of narrowly miss death and things like that. But as he speaks it, um, you notice um, something that you haven't felt before. Like when he speaks it, there's power in, in what he says, like he's casting a spell, but it's not a spell. I do it. Uh, I, I let the dark lady know that I'm trying my best and I thank her for her help so far in my head. I don't say and it all now. Your, your mind, again, you've had this kind of constant picture in your mind of each rune uh, on your gauntlet has that thread that goes through that almost eye of the needle size hole connecting you to the dark lady. And as you say that, the threads vibrate and get just that little bit thicker, which hasn't happened other than when you had that um, vision. You haven't really had any contact with the Dark Lady, but for some reason, it's it's a very similar experience to what happened when you were on, on, on the Prime Material Plane. When you would... Uh, pray to the dark lady you would get that kind of feedback and you haven't gotten it since you've been here until now kid i mean unless he interrupts me i'm gonna i'm gonna cast a word of recall here and set this as my new location okay i don't know where the fuck it is but it's a temple to her so okay uh he he sees you doing that and he uh kind of stands up and gives you a little bit of room and he goes, okay, now it was safe. I guess I can fill you in on what's really been happening here. And that is where we're going to end it for tonight. Oh. So be it. Uh, so, yes, if, uh, uh, if if you tuned in, you missed anything, uh, I, I do upload these ge generally over the weekend to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jody. There's also other stuff there. There's, there's a, a lot of D, D related content there. I have a, a whole series where I talk about um, uh, how uh, uh, classes are designed to be played and how how to to, to get the most out of them. Um, and uh, I also do other stuff too. I do random vlogging where I talk about stuff, generally involving business because that's what I majored in. Um, so yeah, check it out. Follow me on Twitter and stuff like that. Otherwise, um, this is going to be all for us tonight. Uh, sorry for this sh uh, short show, but um, uh, uh, we have, uh, uh, I, I, I've got some other stuff I have to do, unfortunately. Um, so um, again, that's all for me tonight. I will see you guys next time, all right? Bye. Bye, me.